Yeah, it's kind of like leaning into the turn. Nice. You can put that on my car. Here we go. I'm going to spin it up. But have Truck and Gadget done their homework? Now when I pull it. Nice. Works great. We like that. For the mid-scale test, nice. size is everything. OK. The guys need something now, uh, just a little bit bigger. What are we going to make our gyro out of? Well, that should be pretty easy around here. This place is full of old truck parts. Probably grab a flywheel off, off a big rig and uh, maybe a lawnmower engine to spin it up. Go big. Let's do it. The idea is to make a truck that leans into every turn. So you're just shifting the weight inboard and preventing the rollover. So if you're coming in really fast into the turn, it'll make it a lot safer. So we should Across the shop, Nathaniel and Deanne are working out how to keep a truck on the road using the same force that sticks race cars to the track. So the general idea I'm thinking is on race cars, on Indy cars, they have an inverted airplane wing, and as you go faster, it creates this downforce, and that's what gives the car more traction. Yeah, it basically just pushes back on the back end of the car and holds it down. Now the trade-off is Indy cars are going at really high speeds, so you're going to get a lot more downforce. It seems like we just need something that's just going to suck it down at any speed. Speed. Right. So there's one wacky racer that might have the answer. The Chaparral 2J, nickname the Sucker Car. So basically there's a huge box in the back of this race car called a Chaparral. All right. Two massive 700 horsepower fans and they create a vacuum on the on the car to yeah, suck it down to give it down. traction. Oh, check this out. It's high maneuverability at any speed. It's perfect. It's, it sucks the whole car down, okay. and it's still maneuverable at any speed. So you're doing two miles an hour or 100 miles an hour. In 1970, the 2J took the racing world by storm. As well as a main engine, it had a second motor from a snowmobile. This powered two fans that sucked air from underneath the car, giving the tires more grip and sucking it down to the track. With less danger of spinning out of control, drivers put the pedal to the metal and left the opposition in the dust. The question is, how can Nathaniel and Deanne apply this concept to a truck? We're talking about a lot of air if we're yeah. if, with a logging truck. But it's the same thing as a hovercraft, right? I mean, it's just an inverse hovercraft. What do you think? I mean, maybe we could find a, a hovercraft fan. Like, so build like a hovercraft skirt type of thing? And then instead of blowing out air onto the sides, we suck it in. We can just mount the whole system right on top of our trailer and we're done. The simpler we can make it, the better. Yeah. There's the local hardware store. I say we just go down there, try to figure out different ideas to create seals mm -hmm. and um, experiment with that. Yeah. Something's got to work. I definitely think downforce is the way to go. It's a proven technology in race cars. We just have to apply it to a truck. But in general, you're going to corner better, you're going to brake better, the driver's going to have more control. <laughs> Nathaniel and Deanne head out to the hardware store for some retail therapy. Dude. I think we should get something like this, but just without the grass. Deanne and Nathaniel are ready to start on their mid-scale prototype. A vacuum downforce system that sucks the truck to the road. Their prototype is a plywood box mounted on a trailer, sealed to the ground with an inflated tube. A fan creates the vacuum. Underneath our shroud here is a hole. There is a huge fan blade that's just sucking all the air underneath the trailer up and out. A 26-inch fan connected to a 10-horsepower engine sucks 150 cubic feet of air per minute. Lock and load, baby. That looks pretty good. We just centered the shroud and the fan, and we're about to bolt it down, and then we're going to go for a test run. Dad, do you want to hold the kill switch, or you don't care? You want us to stand back? I just want to be really far away. <laughs> All right. Go on, Nathaniel. Put your back into it. Here you go. Yeah. We're going to light a flare, get some smoke, and then we're going to see how much airflow we have really going through this one. It's packing some 
punch. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, that works. As soon as the smoke came off the side, it just, in full throttle, it just went. So let's get the frame mounted, let's get the sides on, seal it up, and build the skirt. To create suction, they're enclosing the trailer's undercarriage with plywood and sealing the bottom edge with an inflatable vinyl tube. So you could already pre-make the tube. But the tube's causing friction between Nathaniel and Deanne. We're just trying to figure out how we're going to mount this skirt. Because it's an inflatable tube. It needs to go in a square box. I'm not going to make square tubes. No, I'm not I'm okay with gonna... it being a radius because then we have to seal all that in. It should just be a square. Just make a square. What's wrong with a square? What? Why are you getting frustrated? I'm getting frustrated because we just got to get this done. While Nathaniel cools off, Deanne starts on the tubular seal. Our math expert has to calculate the dimensions perfectly, or it'll never fit. So we're going to have an inflated tube all along the interior of our box, and then, um, then we're going to have the vacuum in the middle that's sucking all the air that's in between the ground and this tube so that it creates the suction we need. Sounds simple, but it's late and Deanne's brain is showing the strain. No! I tried. This is what I tried to do. That's, that's it. That's what I tried to do. So let me um, make some And I calculated the proper ellipse. I did the math. I did it. I just don't know how to cut and measure. The bell's ringing, but nobody's home. Um, I am an engineer, and I've taken some high-level mathematics, and I taught high school geometry, and um, I worked for a mechanical CAD company, which is essentially geometry in the 3D modeling form. Like, when it comes to geometry, I'm pretty dang good. After 19 episodes, Deanne's about to have Smash Lab's first nervous breakdown. I don't know what happened. I calculated what my S curves needed to be to get my ellipses to fit together. And they don't fit together in 90 degrees. And it's really annoying because I've been spending so much time, my geometry's wrong, and I have to stay here all night and make these stupid tubes go together. How hard can it be? Smash Lab is trying to keep a logging truck from rolling. Oh my goodness! Nathaniel and Deanne think suction is the solution. But they've had trouble sealing the deal. How hard can it be? After a night's rest, things look smoother. They've patched together an inflatable tube for the bottom of their truck sucker. And if it inflates, it should create a good seal with the road. It inflated! It's looking good. It's held together by duct tape, <laughs> so I don't know how long it's going to last, but we're going to go for it. Gadget and Chuck don't have a chance. Yeah. Maybe I Inside the shop, Chuck and Gadget are playing catch-up. They're designing a tilting system that uses a huge gyroscope. Nice. Now they've got to prove the concept with a mid-scale prototype. I think we should try to get this gyro kind of low. Their gyroscope will ride on top of the trailer with the flywheel in the center and a pendulum to trigger the tilt mechanism. A lawnmower engine supplies...